So you thought the OU Auburn postgame show was going to be my last show of the season. Well, that was the plan. And then the news that broke a little earlier than I would have thought, uh, January 5th, 2017, as I'm coming to you now, Joe Mixon, well, Joe says no to Oklahoma for another year and decides to make himself eligible for the NFL draft. Surprising? Well, in my opinion, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was a little surprising because of the fact that there are – several backs, I'm going to say several, there probably are plenty of backs right now that are going to go ahead of them in the NFL draft. I mean, let, let's take out what happened at Pickleman's just for a second a few years ago when he struck Emilio Molitor, you know, broke her jaw and no question has to live with that for the rest of his life. Let, let's just take that out for a second. He would still not be a high pick anyway. And that's really surprised me that, that he's leaving. Now, if, if he stayed, there's no question. He would have an opportunity on the field um, to be more of a big name, and then his draft status could then possibly go even higher at this time next year. So, so I was surprised that he decided to leave now. Um, you got Leonard Fournette, you got Christian McCaffrey, you got Dalvin Cook, you even got Deontay Foreman at Texas. You got his teammate. You got Mix's teammate, Samaj P. Ryan. I think all those guys go ahead of him in the draft, and there will be some teams, by the way, that will not even have Joe Mixon on their draft board. Okay? Now, is this to say that a team out there is not going to pick Joe Mixon? Of course, I'm not stupid. Some team out there is going to. But what I'm telling you is that Mixon, it would be a stunner if he were a first or even a second round pick in the upcoming draft. He may not get picked till the fifth or sixth round. And that's because we know why. We know why because of the incident that happened a few years ago. And, of course, the videotape in relation to that incident that was revealed to the public on December the 16th of last year. Just three weeks ago, by the way, in real time. So, you know, for Joe Mixon, I'm going to say this, okay? Uh, because I'm going to be very, very careful about how I word this so the comments don't light up negatively under my video, okay? For Joe Mixon, I hope he has a good life, okay? Forget about the NFL, okay? Forget about sports, athletic achievement. I hope he has a good life because I don't want to wish ill will upon anybody. Wishing ill will upon people doesn't make me feel better. Um, God can't bless me, in my opinion, if I wish ill will upon my fellow man or woman. You know, so I would say I, I wish him well. He, no question, has to live with what happened at Pickleman's back in 2014 on his 18th birthday. He has to live with that for the rest of his life, okay? Made a major mistake and something he can't take back. Um, hopefully, he was remorseful in that press conference he had just a couple of weeks ago. And hopefully he has learned from it, okay? So I do wish him a good life, okay? If I say I wish him a good NFL career, I'm taking the focus away from the human element. I don't want to do that. Um, by the way, I do want to um, say congratulations to Samaj P. Ryan. In my Auburn postgame video, I inadvertently neglected to say congrats to uh, P. Ryan for breaking the school career rushing record of Billy Sims. And there have been so many terrific backs that have come to the University of Oklahoma before and since Billy Sims. So many great ones. And the fact that Sims was able to hold on to that school career rushing record for nearly 40 years, are you kidding me, is amazing. And Samaje P. Ryan broke the record in the fourth quarter of the Sugar Bowl against Auburn on Monday. So congrats to Samaje. You have a record that is no question very prestigious, and that is the school career rushing record. So I didn't want to let that go, okay? Now, getting back to Joe Mixon, finally, there's going to be several questions that, that fans are going to have, and there's not really going to be a clear-cut answer, but it's worth bringing up. Number one, did Mixon leave because of the incident and the tape and all the negative feedback that he's received and could receive by staying in the year in Oklahoma as a result? We'll never know. We'll, we'll simply put, uh, never know, okay? Um, number two, um, did Joe Mixon, and we definitely won't be able to answer this, did he ever have the premonition prior to even coming to University of Oklahoma, prior to that night in 2014 when he struck Amelia Molitor and broke her jaw, did he, prior to even playing one down for Oklahoma, have a plan to which he knew that he wasn't going to be playing football in Oklahoma beyond the year 2016? In other words, did he already have in his mindset 
once he made the decision to come to Oklahoma, that, hey, I'm only going to be on campus for three years. That's a possibility, okay? That's a possibility because you, as we're seeing more and more players do now, you know, Mixon didn't do it. Not committed for that. But we see players now who leave for the NFL and don't even play in the bowl game. They don't even play in the bowl game unless it's a playoff game, okay? Because they're thinking long-term. They're thinking about not getting hurt in the bowl game and then getting ready for the NFL, okay? So did Joe Mixon only have a three-year plan to come to the University of Oklahoma? Because a lot of running backs, and they'll never tell you this, but they don't ever even plan on being a four-year student once they arrive on campus or once they make that decision to sign that letter of intent, all right? So that's something else, okay? Um, so those are those are a couple of big questions that people are going to be, you know, asking and probably will not get a clear-cut answer. Uh, maybe Joe will answer those questions someday, but I'm not counting on it. And here's another question, too, and this deals more with the program. Who the hell is going to run the football for Oklahoma next year in 2017? Now, Bill Adams, that's possible. Um, you can even see Dimitri Flowers, who, you know, is one hell of a player in terms of what he gives you. He, he gives you his all. He may not have quite the athletic ability of those great running backs out there, but he'll give you a great 60-minute effort, and he'll play his ass off for you, okay? And remember, too, that the Sooners will have one of their better recruiting classes in recent years. Yeah, there's no five-star players on it yet, but they've got 21 players already committed verbally to the University of Oklahoma, and a lot of those players are four-star recruits. So you're getting some pretty good players coming in to Norman here pretty soon. And by the way, I think 11 or 12 of them are going to play spring football. That's really good news because in the past, the Sooners could never get that many early commits to play spring football. You wonder why Alabama and Clemson and Ohio State kick ass? Well, because <laughs> they have good players, but also, too, because they learn the system as early as possible. So um, it's good to have at least a dozen of those players um, that are going to be ready for um, Oklahoma football, and they're not coming in as early as August. They're coming in as early as March, you know, as early as April, to get used to what Bob Stoops and Lincoln Riley and Mike Stoops expect of them. So there are some positives right there. But again, um, top story on this video, Joe Mixon, he will be making himself eligible for the NFL draft. In fact, he already has. And thus ends a, uh, it, I'm not going to lie, it is a productive football career, but also one of the most uh, controversial careers that we've seen of uh, any um, Oklahoma Sooner, and of course you can, you know, you could say, well, Brian Bosworth's career was controversial. We know Marcus Dupree's certainly was, um, but you can add Joe Mixon uh, to that list too. So, for good or for bad, uh, there's no question that none of us will ever forget Joe Mixon. See you later.